It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes. Talking about tapes. Hi, Kira. <laughs> and hi, Johanna. <laughs> hi, Kieran. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Talking About Tapes. I am dressed like a fancy vampire. Getting a lot of mileage out of this black vampire what? jacket. Yeah, where did you get that? Spirit Halloween. Uh, okay. I did it for my dad to look like the Robert De Niro Frankenstein, and then I wore it for the Matrix. Now I'm wearing it here, and I got this nice fancy wig. It's very nice. The, I don't know what... I don't get... I don't get men. I'm going to blame women on this. They probably told... They probably told men being like, you know, the powdered wigs, they're not cool anymore. And some idiots were like, oh, they're not. Mm -mm. And it's like, but I'm wearing it now. And it's like, this is awesome. Why did we stop wearing this? This is great. <laughs> Same thing with capes. Why do men stop wearing capes? No. They're awesome. You know what's awesome? Assless chaps. I like that. I mean, I like people that still idea. wear those if you're in a biker gang. <laughs> With their ass out? Yeah. <laughs> With the air, like, that'd be a lot of uh, chafing. It doesn't seem very... So the reason we're dressed all fancy is because we're going back to the past to talk about Anne Rice's The Vampire Chronicles films. We did not do this to cash in on the death of Anne Rice. I want to mention that right now. She passed away a little bit ago, though. Yes, but... Unlike, you know... But this was on the schedule for a while. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We've had this on the schedule for a while. Mm. And it just so happened she died. My bad. Didn't predict it. Uh, this is the opposite of Betty White where I'm like, oh, thank God. Betty White died. I can finally talk about Lake Placid. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, rest her soul. Her character. You're such a bad person. Her character Flo in Golden Girls really spoke. Flo. Oh, my God. You're, you're a terrible person. So, yes. Uh, oh well, God. the reason we're doing this is because... Can I go back to sleep? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, by the way, welcome Kira back to the show. Yeah. She was on the Ghostbusters episode, and everyone keeps saying, where's Kira? Where's Kira? Well, after the Ghostbusters episode, she decided films were awful, <laughs> and she went into a deep sleep and turned into a statue, and we had to get Kieran to play music to wake her up, and I think we have footage of that right now. That was really heartwarming. I'm glad that music woke you up from your slumber. <laughs> so beautiful. am I. You know, it's just, it warms the vampire's heart. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason we're really doing this is because you two are really into a very terrible movie. Screw you! But before we talk about that movie, we have to talk about the good one that came before it. Okay. I'm sorry, which trend's better? That's a good question. I have to. Didn't we look it up before? Like at one did point, your our ranking system, Queen of the Dam, ranked really high. I don't know why. You know <laughs> why? <laughs> so yes, and I have since uh, read the first three Anne Rice novels. So Very. I'm, I was impressed by that. You really did your research. Uh, Audible, one point five <laughs> speed. You can get through these books pretty quick. What the hell is that noise? There's a lot of noises. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> When vampires are around, things the laws happen. of nature bend to them and things make noises and stuff. Oh my yeah. God. So Interview with a Vampire. When did you guys see this movie? Uh, that definitely was too young to be watching it. Same. Yeah. Same. I don't know when. Well, we've already established on this show. My mom, like when I was like three or four, showed me Bram Stoker's Dracula. Right. And I was like, that's a little too much for a kid. Yeah. Uh, I feel like shortly afterwards we watched this movie. So yeah, yeah this is 94. Five, the first movie I remember, I was like six, and yeah. it was uh oh god, the one with uh was it Dusk Till Dawn? Oh yes, which was, shouldn't have been I was gonna say, isn't seen that, that? It is somewhere, but we also have the second one right there. There was a second one. Okay. Oh, there's three. Oh my god. And the TV show. Mm. Anyway, yes, I remember seeing this as a kid. Uh, still not really knowing what vampires were, but I remember like this movie's very memorable. Okay. Like there are scenes that will just stick with you forever in this movie. When did you see this? I, don't, I was young. <laughs> Probably too young. We all had bad parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, you know, as a kid, you don't know it's a book or anything. Right. I got a little older and I looked into it. Um, this was directed by Neil Jordan, who just got done doing the crying game at this point. Do you ever see the crying game? Nope. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the crying game's good. He's a really good director um, and a writer, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take your word for it. <laughs> and producer David Geffen, who I think it did Beetlejuice because it has oh. the same logo in the beginning. 
Uh, he pumped a ton of money into this. Mm. It shows. $70 million. Yeah, it's very it definitely pretty. definitely shows. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. And even the effects and everything, like $70 million. Like, uh, I think I have, by comparison, Coppola's Dracula cost $40 million, which was also pretty high. Yeah. But, like, a lot of other movies weren't pumping this type of budget into stories. And I think he said he... Yeah, uh, the quote here, I wanted to make it on an epic scale of something like Gone with the Wind. This really is the <laughs> Gone with the Wind of vampire movies. I yeah, I mean, <laughs> Gone with the Wind wasn't memorable for me at all. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, there's memorable scenes. There's a giant fire. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> But this was memorable for you. Yes. Okay. Was Tom Cruise memorable for you? Unfortunately. <laughs> Women hate Tom Cruise. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan. It is such the opposite of the 90s where it's just like everyone loved Tom Cruise. Mm. I still love Tom Cruise. I'm sure he loves you too. Did you want to be bitten by him? I yes. Uh, suck I unfortunately am not a member of his church yet. But you want me to put in a good yet? Word for you? <laughs> My biggest regret. I'm sorry, Joker fan two seven nine's biggest regret was when he was in California. <clears throat> he was outside of the uh, Scientology Museum of Celebrities. Okay. And Joker fan really wanted to do a video in there, but that was the month everyone thought the Joker movie was going to cause murder. So. He decided oh. against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the UCB Comedy Theater, the Improv Theater, right across the Scientology Museum of Celebrities. I think that's on purpose. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so Anne Rice was not happy about Tom Cruise in this. Really? Really did not like it. I think she has it uh, so bizarre. It's almost impossible to ima imagine how it's going to work. Uh, she recommended a number of people. John Malkovich, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons? Birthday. Peter Weller from RoboCop. John Malkovich. Uh, I like that. She wanted Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise to switch roles. Uh, oh. Yeah, so she like was trying to get Tom Cruise out of this movie. Oh. And she didn't want to see it. Oh. She didn't want to be involved with it. Uh, but eventually they sent her a tape. Okay. The studio was like, here's the VHS tape since you're not coming to the goddamn theater. Yeah, see if you, yeah. how you feel about Please it. Please watch this. And she fell in love with it. She says, uh, Tom did make Lestat work. Uh, it was something I could not see in my crystal ball. She's like, he, from the moment he appeared, he was Lestat to me. I was going to say, I'm not a fan, but like, I think he did a great job. Yeah. She was so apologetic when you put this VHS tape on. Uh, well, one, she took out like two pages in a magazine talking about how great the movie is. Okay. And the VHS tape literally starts with Anne Rice at a table going like, hi, everyone. You're about to watch Interview with the Vampire. The Interview with the Vampire, the film you're about to see, is one that I love with all my heart. They sent me this and that's kind of uncommon and I really loved it. It's a masterpiece and they did everything. <laughs> it's a, Yeah, she's like, it, the movie kept everything that was important. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was great. And then she follows it up with, I have a new book out now about Lestat. You should buy it. Shameless self-promotion. She's like stuttering through it. It's like, oh, it's like, did she just ad lib this? She's a writer. Maybe like, why didn't yeah. you guys do another take? Well, she's a great writer. at talking. She yeah. Yeah. The hell? <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. It's like when you expect like uh, hockey players or like any other type of like professional sports. Yeah. Like all they do is, uh, and, um, uh, and, uh. Uh, like the is whole that time. Sort of talking about tapes. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> For me, it would have to be like, 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 yeah. like. <laughs> uh, speaking of Anne Rice, no one knows who wrote this movie. She is credited as the screenplay, but Neil Jordan said he would take the movie if he could write the script. So some people so it's think still like up in the air. People think she wrote a screenplay. Okay. He rewrote it. Okay. But because of like contracts and stuff, she was the only one credited. But like to this day, like people don't really know who wrote what. Huh. Wow. So it's kind of up in the air. That's I think Neil Jordan rewrote a script she did. That's the one that makes the most sense. Yeah. For me. To make it more movie. Yes. When we get to the big Gone with the Wind style fire, uh, that's one of the examples. Okay. Uh, and the effects were done by Stan Winston and Digital Domain, which we just talked about. Yep. In the Fifth Element, check out the Fifth Element review. Do you like the Fifth Element? I love the Fifth Element. See, Good. Uh, women I, love the Fifth Element. They really do, <laughs> except for my mom. Anyway, 
Uh, yeah, and apparently, like, uh, Neil Jordan didn't want to work with Sam Winston. It's like, oh, you're the dinosaur guy. He's like, you're just gonna, you can't do this. And then, like, meanwhile, they did, like, tests and stuff. And he's like, oh, never mind. You guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably, we should probably have you in here. So, yeah, let's get into this uh, movie proper. Okay. Starts off with Elliot Goldenthal's music. Very good. Do you know what other movies he scored? No. Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. And? Was that the one with the nipples? Yes. Okay. Alien 3. He did the score of Alien 3. To be fair, as like, mm, as the Batman movies were, the music always slaps. Actually, Mm -hmm. always. In this movie. All right. So this opening sounds a lot like Alien 3. And there's music cues later on that I think he would end up being in like Batman Forever. A lot of the music in that sounds like music from this, and he made this in between both those movies. <laughs> it happens. So yeah. I think he's just like, oh, I like that thing I did with the trumpets. Yeah. I'm gonna put that. Let's on keep it going. Yeah, Batman Forever it works. Christian Slater, who had to replace River Phoenix, okay, because R- River Phoenix dropped dead like four weeks before they started shooting. Oh. Rest in peace, River <laughs> Rivet. Phoenix. Rivet, Fionics. yeah, my phone. Fion- <laughs> Fion- oh, uh, he's about to interview Brad Pitt's uh, Louis. Uh, cause he's got a, he's got a feeling about him, I guess. What is it? Louis? like, I was following you. Yeah. And yeah. Like, and you saw me in the alleyway yeah. and I saw you and you're lucky I didn't do anything right then. And I'm just like, what the hell's going on, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Calm if down. There's, if there's one thing vampires love to do in Anne Rice books, <clears throat> it's to just fucking talk about themselves at length. So this is the first. They have thing. a lot yeah, of yeah. feelings. They do. Yeah. So emotional. Too many feelings. What would I be if I was a vampire? I mean, but you're <laughs> hundreds of years old, so you've had a lot of time to feel a lot of things, I guess. Oh, so you, you would relate. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we have evidence here of my conspiracy against Johanna. We all went to high school together, and uh, Kira, I think you can vouch that Johanna met me when I was 15. Oh my God. And then didn't hook up with me until I was of age. Wait, I, I was you gr- guys hooked up? I Wait, was, didn't I, we did? Yeah. <laughs> how do you not know? Yo, you know that. But I was groomed, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you bringing this back? You're, this an, so you're an older up. woman who met me when I was 15. We were born the same and, year. And waited, yeah, but older. Oh, so I was. <laughs> I'm trying to cancel Johan. <laughs> it's never gonna work. Oh my god. Well, I might have something later that'll Yeah, do. it was like um what? Uh college. It was like yeah. six months. It was yeah. whatever. So the interviewer doesn't have a name in the movie or the first book, but he goes on to be called Daniel in the sequel novels. Yes, he comes back in the sequels. Uh, the Queen of the Damned book, he comes back. Well you'd have to because the Wait, ending, was he in the right? movie? Huh? <laughs> Sorry. No, that's a different character in Queen of the Dead. The joke is he's not in Queen of the Dead. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Brad Pitt kind of like shows his vampire abilities, how he can just move super fast. Mm. Like that's his like thing where yeah. he turns the lights on really quick. And What does he say? He's just like, oh, he's like, like your tiny human brain can't comprehend my yeah. fast movements. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, <laughs> yeah, he's like, I just moved like you do, just too fast for you to see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, don't do something like cool and then be like, it's no big deal, but it's like kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's like, just all right. small movements. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? These babies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Lewis is a Chad. Yeah. Louis is not a Chad. <laughs> He's a sensitive Chad. <laughs> he is not a Chad. <laughs> uh, I like how he's super pale and you can see his veins. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the thing. Oh, like, yeah, like in his forehead. And yeah. yeah. So the vampires, how they're described in the book is like, they are like insanely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Very, very pale, most of them. Mm-hmm. And like, it's weird. Like how they describe in the book, I don't think you can film because it kind of doesn't make, it's kind of hard to picture. Okay. But like the one giveaway for all of them is like their fingernails are big. Yeah. That's like the one tell. Okay. Uh, yeah, but the makeup is kind of gross. Like the van, like because it, it's just like like here, yeah, like yeah. Because yeah. I think it, I think it, what happens is like when they don't drink for a while, it just starts to show more and more. Uh, uh but he's been dead for two hundred years. Okay, that's a, that's a long time. He has nothing on Eric Northman. Hey, how old is Eric? <laughs> he's Northman? like over a thousand, right, or is right. a thousand or whatever what? it is. I might. Mm-hmm. Okay, I might start those next. The Charlene Harris. Uh, books. They're so different. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. You ever watch True Blood? 
Uh, bits and pieces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like True Blood. <clears throat> a lot of people. Uh, it gets only weird. the first season. I like the first season. The first season is the best. Okay. It does get weird. <laughs> it, it just, it's kind of like, yeah, well. <laughs> when they go to the fairy dimension and it looks like a set from Xena, I'm like, When Oof. suddenly oh, there's God I stuff going that, on. Because I love Xena. I was yeah. into that cheesiness. It's just a little, it's a little jarring in this, okay. <laughs> in the, in the show. Okay. Anyway. Um, so we get to hear Louis' backstory. Right, that he was a uh, slave master? He, oh, we're, we're getting into that. Don't okay. worry about it. Don't <laughs> worry about it. Uh, yes, he was very sad because his wife and daughter died of plague. Mm. Uh, no, the wife died in childbirth. Because of plague? Probably, I don't know. Whatever, they died. I mean, it's yeah, also like reason. past times and giving birth is like terrible. Yeah. Uh, what do so, you know about giving birth? I mean, it's terrible. What do you know about? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he's upset that his family is dead. This is, the, I get to be one of those, like, well, in the book, people. <laughs> okay. Everyone loves the, well, in the book, people. Do that Shut again. up, Harry Potter fan. Wait, do that again. In the book. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. <laughs> so. Oh, how many times are you going to touch your wig? Huh? Where's the counter? <laughs> I cut that part out. You did it way too much. No one wanted to do the counter. Good. Um, I thought that was going to be like the Ghostbusters. I was constantly. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> Thank you for having green hair on a day where I had to shoot pictures of you against a green screen. That was really awesome. Harder. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so in the book, uh, Louis is sad because uh, he still has a sister and I think a mom, but he has a super religious brother who's kind of losing his mind. Okay. And his brother, bear with me, his brother has like a dream that God's like, you got to go back to France and fix France before they revolt. And uh, you need to sell your brother and your family's entire fortune to go back to France and give him the power of God. And Louis like, what? No. <laughs> and then his brother falls down a flight of the stairs and dies. Oh, well, mm. it worked out. They it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> It like, didn't really work out as we find out, but it's, the book the book makes it clear that his brother saw something before he died, and I wonder if that was the stat. But they never they never elaborate on. I it. mean, maybe because they look similar, so he yeah. probably has a type. Yeah, but the movie knew it just needed him to be sad about someone, so they changed it. And I okay. think this change helps with all the Claudia stuff later. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, he um he hates himself and he wants to die. Mm. I love the scene. I guess poker they were playing. Yeah. He just fucking shoot me. Like, yeah. Do it. Yeah. Oh you're, yeah, you're a bitch. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we also get a nice uh, digital match shot right before he gets a blowjob from the prostitute. Yeah. Why did the prostitute get murdered? Why not just kill the pimp? Uh, I think she was in on it. I mean, yeah, but you know, she's she's just doing her job. <laughs> just doing her job. She's doing yeah. her job. She's probably just, gonna get beat if she didn't go along with it. Just following orders. Do you know? Isn't that the Nuremberg defense? You might want to be careful with those words. Uh, there's there's a there's a problematic group in history we that tried to use that. We live in a society. She's. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, in the 40s, there were there were a bunch of people put on trial, and their defense was just following orders, and uh, didn't work out well for them. <laughs> so let me know how well that. Worked out. I mean, but he would be fine. You know, he would have just gotten a blowjob and. <laughs> She wasn't doing the murdering. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Sir, I would just allow the murder to happen. <laughs> so, Lestat murders both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he... He, like, also, like, brutally murdered her. Yeah, they didn't show the uh, pimp's murder. The other guy was, like, yeah. super silent or whatever, and then there she is just screaming her head off. Oh, yeah. Lestat is, like, brutal in this movie. He's a dick. Mm -hmm. He takes joy in He's murder. He's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> he is the worst. Yeah. Uh, and then he grabs Louie and he flies into the air, which yeah. is a power he doesn't get in the books until later, but okay. it looks cool, so who cares? I do like that shot where they just fly into yeah. the air around the boat, and he's like, hey, are you sure you really want to die? And Brad Pitt's like, I changed my mind. <laughs> he like drops him in the water. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he he comes to Louie in his bed, and he's like, hey, I never got a chance. I never got a, I never got a choice in becoming a vampire, but I'm going to give you one. Want to be a vampire? Yeah, it's weird that he gives him that choice after already biting him multiple times, though. Right? Yeah, well, he didn't kill him. 
No, I know. Like, he just plays with his food. Yes, yes. I don't like that. Uh, all right, so this is like, again. There's starving vampires out there. Again, in the book. Because in the movie, I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> There are actually you're pretty close. It's, cut, it's not in the <laughs> oh, movie, Jesus. but there are starving vampires in okay. this world. Oh, so in the book, like Lestat's only been a vampire, I think, for like ten years, and the reason he wants Louis is because he still has to provide for his human father who's blind. What? And he can't bring himself to kill him, so he like wants Louis's like wealth and like mansion and everything. So if Louis is subordinate, he can just live off his dime forever. Why didn't just kill a random rich guy and take his money? Well, no, he wanted, like, money to continue to he kill a rich guy. He wanted to But his like, dad's human. He's not going to live that long regardless. Well, that's the thing. He's taking forever to die, and it's really upsetting Lestat. <laughs> uh, but that's, like, the whole point of this. But oh. in this, the movie, they never tell you how old Lestat is, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think later on, it's just, like, they're playing the whole thing where, like, older vampires need younger vampires to kind of keep them from going crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's another change that works. Do we all agree that change works? Yes. Yes. Okay. Lestat's vampire mom is not in the movies. Anyway. What's that, she like? <laughs> she's a fucking hippie. Oh. Yeah, so Louis is like, I'm going to go look at one last sunset. Like, yeah. I like the line he has. It's like, I'll, I'll remember every moment of that sunset, but I can't remember any sunset before that. Does Lestat really... Okay, so you said he's 10 years old? Like in the book? In va vampire terms. I think well, he's like 10-ish, yeah. He's so not much older than Louis. He like feeds him this like cheesy ass like line sickness and death will never touch you again yeah when it's like you don't you have to die to be a vampire though yeah but it'll never touch you again but it does all the oh. time well th you don't tell them the fat <laughs> part he's a liar <laughs> he's not just like hey you'll never die unless you walk out in the sun because then people will be like i'm sorry what and he's like oh forget that last part you'll never die I mean, they could have, like, on the sun. I'm sure some people would be on board. I feel like they should have, like, pamphlets because a lot gets <laughs> overlooked. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't give them info. We talked about this in the Matrix uh, episode. Oh. Have you seen the Matrix? <laughs> yeah, I've seen the Matrix. Okay. Nothing. We were talking about how they, they like, we can't tell you what the Matrix is. You got to choose one of these pills. Yeah. And it's be my, my theory is that in the past, they were like, so in the real world, we're all being murdered and we drink <laughs> slop. Uh, we could die at any minute and there's no sun and people were like, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. then they had to change the recruitment thing where they're like, you can't be told only if you take the book. <laughs> Same thing with vampires. They can't be like, hey, you can't go out in the sun. Right. You're hungry all the time. Yeah. Uh, I suck as a as a vampire. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and you're going to have to live the rest of your life with me. But like, come on, sign on. <laughs> also, you know, at any minute we could die if they find two asshole Egyptians in a chamber somewhere. It's like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's kind of complicated. Uh, <laughs> let me see here. Uh, so he violently murders uh, Louis. He does. And uh, this whole transformation is like awesome. This is like the beginning of like digital enhancements to yeah. practical effects where they went a little crazy with it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, how his like skin like completely changes is really cool. There's a cooler one later. Uh, but this is also awesome. Like when he, because I guess when you're in a vampire, your like senses are heightened. Okay. It's so, like the world looks so different. You just see Brad Pitt like, what the fuck? <laughs> Sensory overload. Yeah, he's like, trees, I guess. Uh, <laughs> that statue's looking at me. <laughs> yeah, the statue looking. I don't think that's in the book. I think that I think they were trying to foreshadow sequels. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying that's Akasha, but I think that's like foreshadowing. Kind of a... Like there's stuff like that will appear later on. Okay. Uh, even he's just like, yeah, statues look like they're moving. Oh, yeah. Seems weird. I thought um, it was like an actual angel looking at him and being like, oh, well, you're damned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye. I'm getting the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah. Like <laughs> um, and then we cut back to the future and he's just like, oh, so rumors, uh, do, do steaks kill you? And he's like, no. Does this kill you? He's like, no. He's like, do you sleep in coffins? He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that we do. Um, you find out in the book, they don't have to sleep in coffins. Is it, it's just a choice? Yeah, they're real. Is it because they're emotional? It's like the dramatic about it. They're just like yeah. goth bitches. They're just like, oh, yeah. Honestly, like, yeah. skipping ahead, we're, we'll talk more about her in the other one, but like, Louis, uh, Lestat's mom, Gabrielle, she's like, we can just dig in the dirt. Like, we're the one for, that you said is a hippie? Yeah, she's okay. like, we, it's like, we have to look for coffins? Just dig in the fucking dirt. I'm, I'd like her. Yeah, she's actually a pretty cool character. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, also, so this movie, 
this movie is uh gay. Right. Uh <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The sexual I, tension between on, all these men? No. Honestly, okay, so Lestat definitely is into Louis. Right. Uh mm. in the book in the book of the movie, I never for once believe Louis is into Lestat. I didn't think it in the movie either. No, and I'll, so when I was rewatching this, I'm like, why do they keep saying this is gay? And then an, another character shows up, I'm like that's where the gay stuff mm. really happens. But in the book, uh, they only have one coffin in the beginning, so they have Ooh. to like they have to like lay on top of each other in the mm. coffin. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie, they're like, we can't go too far. Two coffins. And what I wanted to tell you earlier, so Anne Rice was afraid of Hollywood not wanting to do all the gay stuff. Even though it's mostly suggested, because the vampires like don't have sex. Mm, right. Yes. Because, That's, yeah, um, the idea is because they don't need sex to reproduce, like they don't have those kind of urges. Mm -hmm. So they, they they crave like other things, like emotional attachment and whatnot and new feelings. Mm. Uh, but she was so afraid that the studio wouldn't go for it that she was writing a version of the movie where Louis is a woman. Like she was ready to change her book that much just to wow. get this made. Yeah. I'm like, that's, I've never seen a writer of a book like compromise like that. And yeah. eventually the studio was like, now nah, I'm making gay. It's I guess fine. you do anything for your baby though. You know? <laughs> I guess so. I guess <laughs> so. Um, actually, in the sequel, like she tried to do a lot to help that sequel and it didn't, didn't work. Um, where are we at here? Uh, yeah, they drained the horny girl at the tavern. Yeah. Um, Why? He puts down two gold coins. I was offended because uh, he already murdered the barmaid, whatever she was. Yeah. That's not going to cover, it covers the drinks. That does not replace the labor. <laughs> I agree. It's there true. was no tip, no nothing. Like, nothing. Mm. You can tell he's poor. Well, Stad is a commoner. Yeah, he's, he's saving yeah. that. He's really pinching those pennies for his dad, huh? Yeah. So what was up with that girl? Why was she so horny? Uh, you, <sighs> I don't know. Too I don't like, know. Like the, the the tongue biting. Like I'd be like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's back up here. It, it seemed like they kind of had this thing that they could tap into when they wanted to, to kind of seduce people. I guess so. Yeah. What do they call in True Blood? Glamoring. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like they kind of. Yeah. It came and went. Yeah. Uh, but it yeah. It seems to happen a lot too. Whatever. Like there's a lot of like bitings in random parts and people are like, oh, this is the greatest and thing. And then they realize like, that they're bleeding. The they're the like, hell? oh, fuck. Yeah. 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 There's a creepy moment in the book. We'll We'll talk about Ooh, it when okay. it gets to that. There's, there's something, yeah, it's very uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, yeah, but this is where uh, Louis does the whole, like, I can't kill people. Right. And I refuse. Right. And Lestat's like, what? Loser. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I guess he was so religious in life, and it makes a little bit more sense in the book where he feels guilty about his brother's death, who was religious, so it's a whole thing. Yeah. But he doesn't want to take a human life. Okay. Um, in this, what is it? Is, uh, his lingering humanity, he tries to say, but then it just sticks with him the whole time anyway. Yes. Yes. And then we find out that they live on a plantation. So Louis owes a plantation. Now, I want to I want to say something. They started in the intro, though. I guess so. But this is the first time we're seeing it. <laughs> right, right, actually. right. Yeah. But I, I just want to say something about plantations and slavery. This might be a hot take. And I'm not speaking for everyone on the panel, but I just want you to know, Kira, I personally think mm. slavery, yeah. way out of line. Not a fan of it. Thank you. I don't hear that often. Yeah. I, I thought about it and I was just like, this is ridiculous. What, what, what were they doing? I looked into it. These plantations had anywhere between like 50 to 100 slaves. Some of them had a thousand. Right. Way too much. <laughs> That's excessive. I mean, you know, overconsumption, right? Yeah. Mm. Two or three. Sure. Four, we'll talk. Anything after that, that's like, I think we all agree, right? Just don't have slaves. Well, ideally, Wild yes. take. Like, uh. Again, I, again I, and I don't speak for everyone on this panel. Mm. You have your own opinions. But I'm saying right now that them. I, Tony from Act the Movies, do not like slavery. Don't agree with it. And if I was there, I would have been like, hey, hey, rethink this. Interesting, because you've kept me asleep in your storage for how long? Oh, that's not a race thing. That's a you're an evil vampire thing. Okay, that's yes. fair. Vampires, I hate. It's yeah. <laughs> so. Do you, oh, guys, do you guys agree that slavery is bad? Literally, just said it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed you haven't said anything. Yet. <laughs> I am uh, gonna go on record and say that I agree. Okay. 
if you were worried. <laughs> why why did it seem like you were thinking about it the most? <laughs> you have so, to consider all avenues, you know? Yes. Uh, it's actually funny in the book, like Louis, like as he's becoming a vampire, and he's he's kind of have a realization. He's like, oh yeah, I guess we're mean to black people. I never thought about it. Like that's kind of we shouldn't be doing that. What's up with that? But like him becoming less racist is, I think it's kind of like, I think it's tied into him just becoming less human, so he doesn't really care. Yeah. Like that was something that popped up for me. I was like, yeah. oh, that's interesting because he like comes to. Him and he's like, oh, you know, I I see your pain and like your suffering, yeah. and I want to take it from you. Mm. And I'm like, well, well, I wonder if any other slaves are like suffering. You don't want to relieve any of them. Yeah, but that. they don't. Have, that's racist. Yeah, but they don't. They don't. They don't have money that he can just live <laughs> off of. <laughs> also, as we find out, they're like food for Lestat, basically. Yeah, he <laughs> gets like, a little carried away. Some of them. It's a yeah. little carried away. Yeah, but he's only getting carried away. Because Louis was carried away with having so many of those slaves. Like, what the hell, man? <laughs> this scene was fucked up, though. Like, the lady's, like, crying over the one guy or whatever. Yeah, other people they're are pushing them out of her. Yeah, but they're, like, chill as shit about it. It's just like, oh, another one. I'm just like, oh, my God. Yeah. Really, really, Louis should be like, hey, if you're going to do it, can you, like, bury them somewhere else? Like, what? You threw them in the what? Like, people drink from them. What the fuck are you doing? Anyway. Also true. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, where I'm at here. Okay, I disagree with slavery. I'm glad I got <laughs> out there. You know, it's you got to be brave and take strong stances on things. Okay, so uh, one of the slaves is Thandie Newton. She changed her name. Um, it's like the one day or something now. It's like her actual name. Oh, okay. I forget how to say it, but it, there's like a W in it now. Wait, now? Yeah, yeah. She changed her. So this is like her stage name. She changed her name back to her actual name. I go on the whole, like, uh, I'm not racist, and then I, I dead name a uh, black girl. I can't fucking win. I can't <laughs> win. Well, Miss Newton? Yeah, her <laughs> last name's still the same. I forget how to... Yeah. Yes. She would end up being with Tom Cruise again in Mission Impossible 2. I got, oh. the, I got the vinyl up there for okay. Mission Impossible 2. I, I like, didn't like her. Huh? Yeah. Didn't like her. Wait, didn't like her it? character. Van Van Deal? I think it's Dway? Van Dway? Van Looks the same. It looks like it's pronounced. Well, the yeah, no, it's not pronounced. It's pronounced differently. Yeah. It looks French. But Is it like a Creole? Wait, you don't like so. you don't like her? No, I didn't like the character. Oh, yeah. very Uncle Ruckus. Uh, you know, my mass is a good mass, a looking ass bitch. So, oh, I'm sorry. Can I say that? You can say it. Okay. <laughs> no one else can say it. <laughs> I forget if that was. I'm trying to, because like I binged the three books, so you know, uh, it's hard like to retain. She was super simple. She's like, I'm worried about you. You're worried about yourself. Well, I think what it is is like, well, yes, again, slavery, wrong. <laughs> but I think the thing is like, man, like, they, like, sure, we're slaves, but like, things were fine, I guess. Yeah. As good as it can be if you're a slave. I guess. But it's like, and then this fucking French asshole moved in with our, like, master. And now he's messing things up. Yeah, he's being a real <laughs> dick to us. He's like, uh, people are suddenly dying. We never see the master anymore. Like, we're making food and they're, I like how they just, like, pretend to eat. Yeah, just he's to keep more, up the like, illusion. depressed than normal. Yeah. And they're like, man, like, things were less shitty before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they also got rid of like the overseer characters and a couple mm. other characters in this whole segment. Oh, so glad. Huh? <laughs> Said so glad. <laughs> uh, let me see here. And here is where Lestat's like, oh, by the way, we can eat rats. Yeah. And Louis's like, or other animals. Yeah, Louis's yeah, yeah. like, now you tell me. He's but like, then you think like the rat's blood was kind of gross. Yeah, and he's like, snap. It, mm. it, it got cold too fast. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is a smaller animal, so that makes yes. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's the whole thing. He's like, yeah, your rats are good to eat when you're on a boat for like a month. Mm -hmm. It's like, and you got to eat something. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's whole. Louis's like, I'm just going to eat animals. I swear to God, Stephanie Meyer like watched this movie a thousand times. And was like, this is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Twilight. Uh. So yeah, so Lestat, he's telling us about Lestat. And Lestat's like. He's like, yeah, he loved to kill like young girls in the beginning of the night, and then right. he loved to be around rich aristocrats and kill them. And this is where they kind of add some sequel stuff. Lestat says he can uh, read minds. Okay. Read her thoughts. Read her thoughts. But that's not. It's not something he revealed in the first book. Okay. 
Uh, but again, they're like pulling from other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, so in, in this movie, he's a monster. In the novel, he's a yeah, monster. Yeah, he's got like a taste for uh, for he, sex workers and minorities. Yeah, <laughs> yes, but and old rich white women. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In the not in the really se- too like too concerned about those though. Yeah. <laughs> so in the sequel book, <laughs> the Vampire Lestat, Staff, told from Lestat's point of view, he uh, basically is just like Louis's a fucking liar. I he, he basically says like I only ever killed bad people and he like he he talks about this the first book he's like that guy that Louis loved and was so mad at me he was a murderer so was that chick just take my word for it oh I was gonna uh, say did he have any proof for the, I guess not <laughs> I think Anne Rice has gone on record saying Lestat's not lying but whatever uh, but here he tells her like yeah I'm reading her mind she killed her husband yeah, she had the <laughs> young lover kill yeah. the husband yeah. And I think that's like sprinkling it. Like, is he lying? Can he even really read minds? Or did he make that up so people would think that he wasn't just a cold-blooded killer? Who's to say? <laughs> I haven't read the other sequels, so I'm not right, really we'll sure then. who's... I feel like yeah. I have a feeling going into these three books right now, there's a lot of unreliable narrator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is a setup for it where it's just like, yeah, I only kill bad people. You yeah. just you just don't believe me. <laughs> um, but I like that... Uh, <laughs> Fucking Louis is gonna try and seduce the old lady. She's like, I could be your grandmother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought he was doing that because like he already seemed to have like this sense of morality where he didn't want to kill. Yeah. And maybe he's like, Oh, she's lived her life. Yeah, he's like trying to justify it. I would have preferred he killed her over the poodles. <laughs> he ends up the poodle. oh, baby. That's so messed up. <laughs> I do like I do like he just grabs it and cuts and she's just screaming. He's, it's like and he's a eating the puppy. second one. <laughs> Stan Winston Studios, you can make a T-Rex that looks phenomenal. You can't make a good looking dead poodle? Like what the fuck, how hard is it? You just go out, you kill a poodle, you stuff it? Like it's that easy. What's wrong with you? Sorry, back back up. Hot take, (laughs) I am against murdering poodles for their blood. Don't agree with it. Do we all agree poodle murder's wrong? For their blood or for their corpses as props? You did not dis- like specify. You said blood. Moving on. <laughs> uh, so Lestat just snaps her neck. Yeah. So By she dies anyway. Way, yeah. They weren't poodles. They're papillons. He calls them a poodle. No, he says he, papillons. Yeah, yeah. Or the lady calls call them papillons them. when uh, she like eats some or he's eating them. She's like, my beloved papillons. When Lestat's like yelling at him about it, he's like, you're out here eating poodles? Like, yes. Why? <laughs> so I believe Lestat. So he had no respect for anything. So, so you're so. believing the words of a maybe murderer and not the yeah, beautiful she's correct. Lestat? <laughs> You can be a murderer and still be honest. Uh, but I like Louis starts to like beat up Lestat. He's like, there you go. And he's like, ah, you know what? Eat all the rats you want. You'll you know, eventually. He's like, go. finally. He's like, like you'll, yes. fi- you'll eventually Get come around. Get dominant with me. As long as, yeah, <laughs> as, long as you're topping. Um, can I say that? I'm sorry. You can definitely say it. <laughs> you know, we, we have a new guest on the show and I thought things would get more safe for work. And now the show's getting hornier. This movie's horny. It's real horny. I, I try to have a family program. <laughs> Stupid. I really do. I try to have a family I program. You. I think that we're just, you know, showing her respect. She wanted this to be as gay as possible. And, you know. <sighs> so, Lestat says life without me would be more unbearable. They don't do as much gaslighting in the books. Okay. Because that's the whole thing. And there was like a little thing earlier where he's just like, where do we come from? And he's like, I don't know these things. Yeah. Uh, In the book, like every time Louis like works up the courage to leave, Lestat's just like, well, you know, you don't know about this thing that vampires have to deal with. Yeah, that's so messed up. And he's like, I guess I should stay to learn about that. See, if they had pamphlets, this wouldn't be an issue. (laughs) But if they have pamphlets, they can't keep around these other vampires to keep them company. That's true. It's gotta uh, be a better vampire. I guess so. I guess <laughs> so. But yeah, so they, they they do it a little bit in this. Armand does it a lot. Uh, but yeah, yeah, they don't do it as much. Because um, the whole thing is like this, this whole book is about like dealing with toxic relationships. Yep. Just like trying to get out of toxic relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, The slaves... They're they're a little fed up with everyone getting eaten. Yeah, 
and they're putting on rituals and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Killed a bunch of chickens. Mm-hmm. Yes, and Lestat's just like, oh God, they won't shut up. Yeah. And I, if I was there, I'd be like, Lestat, you respect them. Also free them. I'm against slavery. If I was there, and then I'd probably be murdered because it's Lestat. But also, they'd be like, "Who are you, time traveler? Where did you come from?" You'd fit right in. <laughs> yeah, I just blend in. Hello, with your shirt underneath there too. Yeah. Hello, I am here. <laughs> By the way, the Tony Peak shirt, it's not on Teespring right now. Why? I don't know. It like said the design like expired. Like I had it temporary, but I haven't. Mm. And then when I hit resupply, it just gets stuck on a loading wheel. Oh. It, Teesp- uh, look, I like Teespring, but like. They don't like you. Their site is very <laughs> glitchy right now, and okay. they need to fix that. Their prints aren't that great. They're hit or miss. Uh, but no, I want people to buy my face, and it's not available to them right now. I'm very upset about that. <laughs> you know, it is available the twerking Tony shirt. The twerking cartoon. You Tony? know who else really liked to talk about themselves in this movie? <laughs> oh my god, he's a vampire. He's really a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'm getting the garlic. <laughs> Look, I again, I'm listening to books where people just talk about themselves. I guess it rubbed off on if me. If you found out today that Tony was an actual vampire, would you murder him? <laughs> <laughs> So I finally have an excuse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> so the sla- the slaves are upset, understandably. Also, Lestat's not giving his backstory at all because right. it wasn't written in the first book. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see here. I got the racist stuff there, uh, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got the racist stuff here. Oh. So, Louis, uh, Lestat leaves to go, like, eat people. Right. And he, he, like, rides his horse through the fire and, like, just gives the slaves, like, a look. Like, stop it. Uh, <laughs> which makes them matter. Yeah, understandably. yeah, yeah. Duh. But, yeah, Th- 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 Thawandi, Th- Miss Newton comes in. Yeah. And she's all like, Master, you got to, like. Stop this. Like, one, I think you're gay, and that's not cool in the yeah, 1700s. Yeah. <laughs> Two, your, your gay friend. Really needs to get out of here. Yeah, she's like, everywhere you guys go, it's there's weird stuff happening. Yeah, so. and then he like uh, tries to. Ki- he doesn't kill her. He like almost does. So she just uh, passed out. Yeah, I think he was like drained her. He didn't drain her all the way to kill her. I, he just wanted to scare them. To, I guess to so. Create yes. that whole dramatic. Yes, thing yes. He did. And the, we forgot to mention important detail. You're not supposed to drink the last drop of a dead corpse. Right. Not supposed to drink like dead blood because right. it'll like poison you. Yep. Yeah. They say it'll kill you, but... But uh, Lestat said that there was no sickness in this. Yeah, he's a liar. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you know this. Uh, just, listen, <laughs> ladies, spoiler. But men, they sometimes lie sometimes? to get things they want. I, I don't know if you've come across this, <laughs> but in your travels, keep an eye out for that. Sometimes men say things that aren't true. Not me. I'm a see see that was an example of something that wasn't true. I just lied. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not a liar. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so he like brings Thanny huh. Newton out. I'm sorry, Miss Newton, whatever her new name is. And he's like, "I'm the devil. You're all free." Right. And really they should be like, "That's I mean, it's kind of scary that guy's the devil, but he freed us. I don't know how to feel about this." Yeah. I mean, I guess that kind of backs the whole like theory you have that their living situation wasn't the worst that was out there Yeah, for them. Um, no. Because I feel like he kind of put on that whole, it wasn't just part of his mental breakdown, but he really wanted to give them a reason to leave. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's people in, I'm, I'm sure there are some prisons that are better than other exactly. prisons. I mean, it sucks you're in prison. Yeah. But I'm like, if you're thinking about it, like there's shitty situations you could be in, but like there's different. Like, levels. would you rather be in like, what are the the ones where they waterboard you? Or yeah. like the one that Martha Stewart went to? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I know which one I would want to go to. <laughs> huh. <laughs> so, uh, Lestat's very upset that he burnt down the house. Right. Also, that was a good uh, miniature digitally composited mm-hmm. in. Uh, and he's like, what the hell? I like this house. 
You dick. What is yeah. he like? Now we have to go sleep like in the streets or whatever he said. Yeah, what? they're they're like they're, he, like he wakes up because he ex, he gets exhausted from the smoke because fire can hurt them. Yeah. Um. He's like, where are you? He's like, a graveyard. Are you happy? We're yeah. living a goddamn graveyard now. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, they live uh, near like the harbor. Uh, and they're okay. they're killing some prostitutes, and this scene's like disturbing to watch, because the girl's dying. They, uh huh? They, what? They were killing prostitutes, or just Lestat? He was killing <laughs> prostitutes, okay. and Lu and Louis was just kind of letting it happen, right? But like he he kills the one right away, and right? He's like, oh, she passed out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The other one, he's like torturing, right? Yeah, he like bites it her was boob. Dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, this is what I mean from earlier. Like she was like into that, and then she realizes, oh the my god, I'm blood. bleeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So she's like freaking out, and like, and he just actress, keeps doing worse things to her. Yeah. The actress looks uh, really familiar too. By the I way, so too. yes, what? I I think I know who she is. God damn it, was she in King of Comedy? Look up that actress. <laughs> Let us know what she was in that we might have seen. I think she's the girl from King Comedy and a couple other movies. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking at her. I'm like, I know her from something and it's driving me insane. But yeah, it's real disturbing. Like when he has her like in the coffin. Yeah. He's just like, like, gosh, shut up. He's uh -huh. like, just get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of us never get to know what it's like. And Louis's just like, can you please stop being an asshole? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is very hard for me. Uh, but here, I think, is where he introduces him to the idea. It's like, hey, killing mortals is the one thing that makes you feel better. Yeah. Like, rats and stuff will sustain you, but you don't feel good unless you, like, murder them. Uh, and he doesn't know how to feel about that. I think he eventually kills the girl. Yeah. Oh, and when she comes out of the coffin, he's like, oh, you might, you, you're dead. And there's the priest. He's like, oh, God. I'm like, that's disturbing. <laughs> yeah, she, like, begs him to save her, right? Yeah. While the stat is still toying with her. Yeah. It's like, it's again, it's kind of hard to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they, I don't think they ever say it, but I, I think this is kind of like the true blood thing where like your superior vampire mm. just has ultimate control over yeah. you. Yeah. Like vampires are real bad parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but like he couldn't fight him even if he, I mean, I guess he could, but it'd be really hard. Yeah. Doesn't he like run off? Yeah. 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 Louis, Louis bummed. He's just walking through the slums. Yeah. Don't go I, down there. The plague's down there. Don't go that way, monsieur. It's the plague. Go back the way you came. The way I came. And he's like, I'm already dead or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> That's uh, me nowadays with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You Are you it? ready to go? Yeah. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Two years of this shit. I'm done. <laughs> wow. Problematic. We're all in this together. Um, I'm dead, so. You're dead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go die in Disney. <laughs> During the Haunted Mansion, and then I'll haunt it forever. I'll be that hundredth ghost, or the thousandth ghost. Oh, my God. Yeah. Anyway. So it's 999. The ghosts aren't real. Happy haunts. Oh, God. <laughs> so... Where we had here, <laughs> Louis finds a little girl whose mom's dead, right? And the dad, and the dad's gone. The dad's nowhere to be. Dad's found. gone. Mom's dead. Dad went for milk. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> milk and cigarettes. Yeah, <laughs> he's coming back one day. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, Louis is just like, I guess he's trying to justify it in his head. It's like, well, she's gonna die anyway. Yeah. I guess I'll drain her. Yeah, uh, and he starts to drain her. Of course, Lestat's like, ah. Gotcha, I knew yeah, it. He walks through the door. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't wait. He's like, you're a murderer. Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to dance with the dead body. He oh, that was wrong. What, what did he say? She has, um, she has life, life, in life in her yet. Yeah. <laughs> that was messed up. <laughs> what is wrong with <laughs> her dead body's just playing? Yeah. Oh my and the God. Little, little, little Kirsten Dunst. Just so on cute. the bed, passed out. Yes, 12 yeah. year old Kirsten Dunst. So right. Cute. Aged up from five in the book. Mm -hmm. Didn't she say she had to? kiss one of them in this film and that yes. the lips were chapped. She did not. Yeah, that's later on. That's and she funny. like hated it because she was like a 12 year old girl and yeah. wasn't into Brad. Brad Pitt wasn't as big as he is now, but I don't know. She didn't have her sexual awakening yet. She didn't go to Spider-Man 2 where some people got their sexual See, awakening. I don't find Brad Pitt attractive. Really? Yeah, he's got just, like the whole movie. I was like, damn, that quagmire would be jealous of that. Right? Oh, like, it was like rough. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, never, never been into him. Been into his wife, who now divorced. But oh my god, me too. Angelina can I can get it her any so day, bad. any oh. day, any day. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. No comment, because I don't see women as objects. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Louis is very upset. He's right. hiding in a sewer, eating rats. Right. And Lestat's like, hey, buddy, I followed the rats. Uh, <laughs> sorry about all that. Uh, why don't you come home? I got something for you. Yeah. He's like, this is the uh, this is the whole, like, I can, I can fix him. Or, no, no, no. This isn't I can fix him. This is the anchor baby. Right. Yeah, he's like, hey, you know that little girl? Oh, my girl? God, right. Hey, that little girl, she's she's not dead yet. Uh, maybe I can turn her. And he's like, oh, I don't know. He's like, it'll be a companion for you. That was his version of, you're not going anywhere. I'm pregnant. Yes. That's literally <laughs> what it is. Like, oh, no, he's going to leave me. I need to get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was uh, yeah. really messed up. Uh, yeah. Just the idea of vampire children has always been messed up. So yeah. I'm glad that they like delved into that. Do you guys ever watch the What We Do in the Shadows show? The TV show now. Oh watch yeah. In the, the TV show, like the, the vampires are like under investigation and one of them turns out they turned a baby into a vampire and they never got caught. <laughs> and they're just like they're just like, Yeah, I feel feel bad about that. <laughs> oh <my laughs> they're like they're God. still looking like who turned this baby into a vampire? It's a bad idea. They're like <laughs> I think I think they uh, put it on Bat Batista has a cameo, and I think they blame Batista, but it's one of the other <laughs> oh vampires. <my> God. <laughs> but the, yeah, so he turns Claudia into a vampire. Oh right, vampirism is like an anti-ugly spray because like all the dirt and soot yeah. or whatever was on her, like that disappears. Her, her hair, hair, yeah, just yeah. like it's oh yeah, her hair like changed. By the way, great digital transformation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, really, really good. This is like a few years after Star Trek Six, and they like. The jump between that went really, really well. I don't know if it was her acting or the makeup, but like her death face was, I thought that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Haunting. Yeah. And she gets, yeah, she kills like the maid. Immediately. And right away is like, I want some more. Mm -hmm. This comes back in the next movie. Uh, interesting. Uh, do you guys see Deadpool 2? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, the cab driver, Dopinder, he talks about killing. Yeah. He's like, I feel like, Kirsten Dunst and I want some more <laughs> and then later in that movie Brad Pitt has a two second cameo oh my god in Deadpool 2 yeah okay. oh my god what do you know uh yeah so let me see here oh in the in the books I think uh in Vampire Lestat even Lestat's just like yeah I feel bad about that one probably should not have turned that kid into oh, a vampire it's like look 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 like I know I'm called Louis a liar but that one's on me I'm I'll glad see. he at least, you know. <laughs> like, you know, upon, upon reflection, yeah. I guess I went a little too far. Definitely. <laughs> Damn. Um, let me see here. Oh, I thought it was a little unsettling that, like, when her mom died, uh, Claudia immediately hugged uh, Louis. It was like, yeah. uh, did they not teach Stranger Danger back then? Or I think it was more like her dad's gone... Her mom just died in front of her, even though she's a kid. She's not really like understanding what's going on or whatever. Right. And she's also alone. I like, mean, yeah. And now she's a vampire. But there's no, no, a no, this strange was a hug man. Before. Oh, before, before, yeah. Yeah, this was like literally when her mom, like she was hugging oh, right, her body, right, right. and she turned and he was there. This mysterious. I man, think she, she was just happy to see him. someone who wasn't dead. I guess twist was he was. That's how you get sold, though. You don't do that. Stranger danger. Sold into what? I guess vampirism in this case. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, what? What in the real world? I am against whatever it this is. This is a family channel. <laughs> this is a family. <laughs> Thank you for coming around on this. <laughs> see, see, you learned you went too far, and you remembered it's a family show. <laughs> I wish other people would realize this is a nice, safer work. <laughs> Where? Where? Oh, <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, Claudia gets a little out of control with the killing. Immediately. <laughs> she takes yeah, to it right she's away. She's a child. Like, what did he expect? <laughs> I like they're like, yeah, her and Lestat would kill entire families. Yeah. <laughs> you just see, like, all the coffins, like, this multiple funeral processions. Like, all right. I would say relax, yeah. but since uh, New Orleans is like a uh, port, <laughs> there's just new immigrants <laughs> just coming, coming every and day. going all the time. Oh, my God, my wig. <laughs> <laughs> Killed it. <Ooh. laughs> uh, yeah, they're like, yeah, they're new immigrants every other day. We got people we can never, never not go hungry. Yeah. But um, again, that's like why you don't make children vampires. Children do not have any sort of impulse control. Yes. And she is aging mentally. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's messed up. Yeah, she sees the naked girl and in the window, the naked like Creole girl. Yeah. I think this is the first, like, fully naked girl I ever saw in a movie. Hmm. And I guess the second one would be later in the movie. Dusk yeah. Till Dawn was, well, sh- uh, not, no, because that was fully naked. Dusk Till Dawn was just titties. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the first fully naked. This is one I can think of. But yeah, so she's looking at the girl in the thing. She's <laughs> no, like, The Shining, that old lady. You're right. That's the first one. That was My bad. One. 100%. My mm-hmm. bad. Anyway. God damn it. I, I can feel it. <laughs> Ooh, where are your clips? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it's not nice to, <laughs> to be mean. Okay. I'm going to stab you. Look you look so pretty. Thank you. I never get complimented on this show. <laughs> oh my god, he's crying. <laughs> he's finally crying after all these years. <laughs> I feel just like Louie. <laughs> just a one single tear. Yeah. You're my Christian Slater. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Lestat, you groomer. Anyway. <laughs> oh so uh, Claudia sees the naked girl and right. she's like, shit. She's like, shit, I'll never have tits. She tells them she wants to. Be like yeah, her, she's right? like, I want to be her, and they're yeah. like, Well, no, because you'll grow old and die. Why does list? I mean, why does Lestat look at him like, Oh, sh- how are we going to address this? You did this, Lestat. Admittedly, in the novels, Lestat starts things without thinking how they'll end, <laughs> and this is one of them. He's just like, because she says that, and he turns and has this look on his face, and I'm like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so she's fault. she's very very upset, and yeah. she's like obsessed with that. Rightly lady so. Now. Also, lady. Shut your shut your window. She wanted it don't to look. enjoy the yeah. yeah she wanted look. to enjoy the nice breeze. I thought you She's said you didn't see women as objects. I'm just saying, there's a lot of there are men out there who do, and they're gonna walk by and see that you're gonna get in trouble. Shut that window. Trouble <laughs> or other things. I don't know. <laughs> was, was, oh, was you're gonna make it in the window a crime. And you're gonna get Claudia. <laughs> so don't yeah. do it. Uh yeah. So Claudia is like freaking out like she gets another doll right because it's her birthday right and she's like i fucking hate you lestat i hate looking like a little girl yeah i'm gonna chop off my hair and then it grows right back yeah i think in the in the novels like you have to wait like a day Mm -hmm. uh so she's pissed at him and she's like which one of you did it which one of you turned me yeah uh then i think she learns that uh lestat turned her but it was louis who killed her (laughs) right initially uh, also, she has the Creole lady's body yeah, in her room. Yeah, she's under the dolls. Yeah. yeah, they're like, you're leaving a rotting corpse in there? She's like, I want to look at her. That gave me flashbacks to like my childhood. No, there were no rotting corpses in my room. Hold on. <laughs> I hold think- on, hold on. Before, before you finish this, let me just... I'm going to do the nine <laughs> and the one. Let's hear the rest of that story. No, I think every kid had that moment where they would like hide food in their room. Until it went bad at some point, and your parents were like, "What are you doing?" And it felt like that. Oh, okay, that's not a crime. Um, <laughs> well, I didn't do that. Yeah, well, you do that, and that's kind of like the start before you move on to the corpses. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hide food in the room. I didn't eat a lot as a kid, so. No, you eat a lot now. I started dating women in my teens. <laughs> And that fucking stress eating. Very stressful. Uh, MGTOW now. Not a problem anymore. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Again. (laughs) Again. (laughs) I like when Claudia uh, killed her piano teacher. Oh yeah! Wait. So okay, I like I like when he that was the one scene that really like got to me as a kid. Yeah. Like when she like killed the girl making the dress. Yeah. Oh, she pricked her finger. She's yeah. like, oh, I'll kiss it and make it better. And then starts going like, yeah. yeah. And then, and then like, bites her a little in bit. The house. Like what are you? Yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise. It's like what did hand. we tell you? <laughs> yeah. Like no, bad. I knew it was coming though. The first like whack on the hand, I was like, oh. It's but it's not- weird. So like, I guess she drained him. And let him sit and there. And let him sit up until he fell down. I love this whole comp. That I think this is my first experience as a kid, like dark humor. Yeah, because it was funny. It's a comedic montage, but it like horrifying thing. And as a kid, yeah. I was like uncomfortable. I'm like, I, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> um, how old was she in the movie? In the movie, she's twelve. 
Oh, and because you said in the book she in was In the book five. she was five, yeah. That's rough. Five or six. Oh, my God. Again, shout out to... Uh, shit, I don't even remember his name. There's a guy on YouTube that has reviewed uh, this book, and he does the... Not my usual friend, C.B. Smith. I actually don't even know this guy personally. Uh, but there's a guy who does, like, a, a series where he talks about, like, books and movies, and he did do these. Mm. And they were very helpful. I read the books, but I also watched his videos to, as like a refresher. And I'll shout him out here because I'm probably doing a bad job and he does a bit, much better job. Anyway, uh, speaking of books right here, uh, Lestat's just like, hey, uh, I met a new uh, boy who I'm going to turn into a vampire. He's going to be a way yeah. better vampire than you. Need you need a brother. Yeah, hey, you need a brother. This is a character from the book. Oh, okay. Who he does end up changing, but... What is his deal? Okay, so you know what's, like, about to happen to Lestat. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, basically the boy is helping Lestat, like, while he's recovering from all that shit. But the movie completely omits him. I was going to say, okay, how did he, like, survive? So, I guess... Yeah, it's... Was... They, yeah, that's some weird changes they made there. He's lucky she didn't create, like, an army of vampire children. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think oh, she says later on she's not strong enough. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Lestat says the meanest thing he could possibly say to her. Because she's like, I have a gift for you, even though you're the father of life. I like that she's being mean, but nice. Yeah. And then he goes, I hope it's a beautiful woman with endowments you'll never possess. I hope it's a beautiful woman with endowments you'll never possess. And she's like, why do you say such thing? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty fucking cold. He's a dick. Is, yeah, he that is clearly. pretty cold. I don't even know why we keep questioning his. Yeah, like, he's, he's it is literally a piece of shit. Well, yeah. remember, Louis's lying. Lu According to Lestat, Louis's lying. In the oh, program. right, right, right. <laughs> um, so she gives him two boys. Right. Like they're drunk. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, you should totally drink their blood, but it's a trick. She poisoned them with a poison that keeps the blood warm. So he's like, I drank dead blood. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, uh, he's not taking it well. And then she slits his throat. Yeah. Then it starts I, getting ugly. Yeah. I, I like when Louis walks in. He's like, oh, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> dude, the effect of him being drained, like how it's like a puppet with CGI is yeah. so good. Mm. Like his skin. I didn't know it was a puppet. It's like a puppet enhanced with CGI. Well, it's like it's the actor first. And, you right. know, then they cut and then it's the puppet like shriveling. Okay. And it I think they great, Yeah. They digitally color. It look. It still it holds up now. It yeah. looks really, really good. Yeah. There's a CGI vampire later that does not hold up. Yeah. Mm. No. Um. I wonder if it's the one I'm thinking. But I yeah, so the, basically, the, he's just sitting on the floor, and they're like, is he dead? Because <laughs> <laughs> remember, Lestat didn't really teach them anything about right, death. Right, and then they just set the place like, on fire, right? They know about sunlight, right. and they know not to drink dead blood all the way. Right, and uh, Louis knows how to turn, right? Because he explains that to Claudia. Yeah, Louis knows how to turn people. Yeah. Because, uh, well, also, he's seen it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they, they don't know what to do, and they're like, should we cut him up, burn him? Or, and he's like, Claudia, you really? Like, that's fucked. <laughs> like, I did it for us. So they throw him in a swamp. Yeah. And there's an alligator Claudia's there. Claudia's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a crocodile there, or an alligator. I'm not sure which one. I think which, it's a crocodile. Does New Orleans have alligators or crocodiles? Uh, what? Do, why would I know? I've been to New Orleans and I held one of them. I should know, but I forget if it was an alligator or a crocodile. He's I'm like, you're black. There's a lot of those in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> Racist Tony. <laughs> you look like a very intelligent woman. I thought maybe <laughs> you would know. <laughs> I think they have gators. I used to work at a Creole restaurant. We had gators. Okay, so you do know. We just you set me up. God damn it. <laughs> now you know how it feels. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, Gator's like in the water. He's like, hey, guy. Uh, then they go back. Oh, you know, I miss, I, for some reason, I thought they set it on fire with him in there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. They don't set him on fire till a little bit. So they're planning to go to Europe. Right. They want to learn more about their vampire kind and see if they can find vampires because yeah. mm -hmm. they can't find any vampires. Uh, they almost don't make it to Europe. 
because they have to fight zombified Lestat. Right. Who has... That's when that happened. Okay. Yes. And he's just like... I have here in my notes, Lestat looks gross. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that he definitely comes back in the book. I think they made him look grosser because of something they cut out, uh, okay. which I'll get to. But yeah, he's all like, yeah, well, first I ate the alligator or crocodile. <laughs> Good for him. Whatever they served at Kira's Creole restaurant, I ate him. <laughs> okay. And he's like, and then, you know, like lizards and frogs. So he was just like in the swamp, like, just ah. eating animals. Okay. <laughs> Probably sleeping in dirt, like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> My mom said this would happen. <laughs> uh, so he's very disappointed in them. Yeah. And they get into a big fight, and then there's a fire. Mm -hmm. They light him on fire. Mm -hmm. And I think in the book, just his home burns up. But since the, you know, gone with the wind, the whole fucking New Orleans quarter starts burning. Oh my gosh. As much (laughs) as the conscience you have, like, look at this. Look what you've done. (laughs) And then they're just on a boat on a bad blue screen. Yeah. A bad blue screen. For this movie, that's a bad blue screen. And we're like, huh, that got out of hand, didn't it? (laughs) (laughs) All right. We really do like to light things on fire. Yeah. That's like a thing we do. But then they go and like start living their best lives, which was nice. But they don't find anything. So in the book. In the book. But technically Harry Potter or Hermione, blah, blah, blah. I sound like you now. This is revenge. Um, so in Sorry the book, that I'm well educated. So in the book, they find a vampire at one point okay. in like this village. But it's like old vampires that don't have a lot to Ew, feed on yeah, uh, and have no one to socialize. So they, they just ran into like Nosferatu. They, yeah, they basically become like zombified brain dead. That's so sad. Like monsters. Wow. And I think they they definitely kill I think they might pretend to be vampire hunters and kill it or something. Wait, okay, so wait. I, I want to know more about this weird vampire. So, you, so what yeah. makes them become like that? I think, from what I can tell, uh, it's because they have no other vampires to latch on to. Oh, oh! So you need companionship. And I think what it is, they live in villages where like they can't like feed all the time because they're not big villages, right? So they kind of like they're eating here and That's there, or maybe they were turned like and not really given a lot of information. There's like different ways you could do it, but yeah. So like in this universe, I think they call them like revenants. Okay. Or wraiths, or maybe those names are interchangeable, but there are all these vampires out there that are just like, ah, where's my brain? Oh my gosh. Blah, and they're like, they look horrifying. That's terrible. And in the book, in the movie, they're depressed because they didn't find anything. In the book, they're like, well, I thought that would be more entertaining. And I like, wonder if they could have like rehabilitated them instead of killing them. Like if you just get yeah. them on a steady food I think supply. Mi- it depends just on how long them. they've been around. Their mind might be too far gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Stat didn't warn them about that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you're alone for a while. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, they go to Paris. And Claudia... Oh, before they go to Paris, uh, Christian Slater's like, so no Dracula. And he's like, no, those are the ravings of an insane Irishman. I'm like, wow. Real low blow to Bram Stoker (laughs) there. Like, what the fuck, buddy? (laughs) Uh, I like that now the stats gone. Claudia dresses like an adult. Right. Yeah. He she was, actually like does like her hair nice. Yeah. yeah, he was keeping her looking like a doll. He was. It's kind of creepy. Mm, well, he's creepy. So. A little, little cutie Spanish. Uh, keep in mind, she's 30 something now or 60 something. Okay. She's older now. Yeah, she's definitely older. Um, well, yeah, what they, she's so upset about though, if like when you become an adult, what do you want to do most? Make money and if you were no, like if you could live forever, like uh, you're immortal, like you're an adult. What are you? Like, I, I feel like coming to adulthood, I was like, I finally get to bang. They don't bang. So <laughs> what is she upset about? I, what is there that she I mean, can? Yeah, she, she can she drink. Can't really she can go anywhere. A bunch of stuff. Yeah, she can't really do a lot of things that adults can do. I mean, she could, but it'd be she's a vampire. She can suspect. do whatever she wants. Yeah, but you know they they're living amongst the people. And she, there's only so much she could do living amongst the people as a child. Okay. Like, what can she, yeah. Like, oh, he gets to go to fancy balls and stuff, but it would be weird if I was there. Okay, that's fair. I mean, she does go to some He does stuff. take, yeah, and they're like, yeah. yeah. But at some point, we were like, wow, that guy brings his daughter to, like, everything. Yeah. It's gonna, mm-hmm. No. I don't know if France was, a, oh, yeah, she's 12. France, they're like, wait, wait three years, buddy. Oh, my God. We learned that in the Fifth Element <sighs> review. Wait, wait. 
Oh no. Yeah, the age of consent is 15, the director of the fifth element. The, you know the blue girl in Fifth yeah. Element? Yeah. Yeah, he met her when she was 12 and dated her when she was 15 and married her at 16. Uh, and then broke up with her with Milo Jovovich. <laughs> okay. The more you know. The more you know. Anyway, they finally meet other vampires. Yeah, that kind of reinforced the whole, like, stick to yourself. Yeah. Things get weird in groups. He's like, I finally met a vampire. And it's like that asshole that's dancing. I thought that was adorable. <laughs> when he's like dancing on the wall. <laughs> and then we meet Armand. And uh, just my wig. Uh, so Armand. Are you the leader of this, this group? If there were a leader, I would be the one. In the novels. Why'd you do Antonio Banderas' accent? <laughs> Armand in the films. Remember Chris Kattan used to do on Saturday Night yes. Live? No. Chris Kattan had a segment called, uh, Hello, I am Antonio Banderas, and this is I, how do you say? Ah, uh, yes, show. That was the name oh of the show. Oh my God. <laughs> I have a lot of uh, Saturday Night Live catching up to do. I was a very strong fan of Mad TV, uh, and I felt like I would be like traitorous by watching Saturday Night Live. I don't think there's like a war. Like There the was in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, yes. In the novels, Armand looks like, uh, like a late teen with right. red, red hair. Red hair, you said, yeah. Well, the thing is, so in the novel, the vampires, they actually, the vampires in Paris actually look how Armand is in this movie. They've all kind of like, they all go through trends just like humans. So they're like, we're all okay. going to dye our hair black and long and mm. dress oh, like this. Oh, yeah. Amazing uh, wig or weave budget for yeah. this movie because their hair, and, everyone's hair looked great. Yeah. And Armand kind of like stands out. But in the movie, they're like, we're getting Antonio Banderas. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to you. Like, I think <laughs> it's because the movie is very, it has a lot of homosexual undertones. They're mm -hmm. like. We don't want to perpetuate the stereotype of gay people being cuties fans. So let's let's <laughs> age this character up a little bit. Yeah. Make him look a little bit more manly. Yeah. However, I really do like Antonio Banderas in this. Me too. Yeah. I thought he did a good but job. But I'm also like, I, I just really like Antonio Banderas. I thought he was emoting way better than uh, Brad Pitt was. Like just yeah. watching their interaction, like when he did the whole candle scene and stuff. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow, he's doing such a good job. And then the camera pans back to Brad Pitt and he's doing the same face that he did. Um, <laughs> the whole movie? <laughs> the whole movie. And also like in, what was it? Meet Joe Black. Joe Black. Joe, oh, yeah, God, like it was the same like. Yeah. So okay. Armand runs the theater of the vampires. Right. It's a theater where vampires pretend to be humans pretend who pretend to be, to be vampires. vampires and they literally murder people on stage, but yes. everyone thinks it's part of the show. Yeah, it's supposed right. to be like a horror show. Yeah. But they were more uncomfortable with the nudity than the, the murder scene. Yeah, but that scene is also uncomfortable. It's like, oh, she's being like horribly murdered and mm -hmm. begging for her life and just no one knows. Yeah, but they're all just watching that. But when like he starts undressing her, the one guy in the audience is like, <laughs> like what? Well, it's, it's 1800s. I guess they're like. No, oh yeah, we see people dying. It's like I do in the not. streets. <laughs> uh, I, me, I, I would be that guy. I'd be like, oh, no, no, have some modesty here. Uh, and I would want to talk talk to the manager of the theater. Mm. <laughs> I would be like, I thought this was a family show at the theater of the vampire. <laughs> oh yeah, was no one like, hey, there's a 13 year old here. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, oh, don't worry. She's going to grow them one day. And then she's like, oh, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, Poor Claudia. Uh, Claudia is not a fan of the show. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like the ending when Antonio Banderas came out and like they murdered that girl. But the beginning part with all the theatrics and stuff, I was mm. like, I'd watch this. <laughs> yeah. So Louis is like real excited to meet Armand. Because he's like, I never had a proper mentor. Right. And Armand's like, yeah. He's you know, got I'm, daddy issues. He really does. Yeah. He really does. Uh, yeah. And Armand is like, yes, I am, as far as I know, the oldest vampire on earth. I'm 400 years old. Whatever it takes to allow you. Spoiler. He's lying. I figured whatever it takes yeah. for me to simp for you and yeah. you to be okay with it. Oh, Armand, okay. like Armand, like just wants someone to hang around him. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> that excites him because he's like, what about these uh, guys? He's like, they all suck. Mm -hmm. He wanted his penis. Mm -hmm. No, they don't want penises. Oh, oh, right. 
That's conflicting. What he said, I think he says in the movie, like, he's like, I'm like intrigued by like your sense of morality and like how you hold on to mortal emotions because most vampires don't do that. I think that excites him. That's new for him because they like new experiences. Okay. I mean, sure, they're gay. That That's the subtext. But since they don't do also that. I think up at this point, um, he still hasn't technically like killed somebody. Yeah. No, no he so, got like, close. Yeah. I guess Claudia, he, but he almost killed Claudia. He brought her to the point of death, but, but he didn't kill her. No, she she could have pulled through. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. she couldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not without them. Also, they have a slave boy. Yeah, that he just drinks from times. occasionally, yeah. and I think in the book they might have mentioned that kid got like a little aroused from the what you were said. Your theory is true. The biting does arouse them. Why did they all laugh? I didn't like that. <laughs> I don't know. When he when he uh, drank from the little boy, when Louie. Oh, because he was about to bite like their holes. He's like, oh. <laughs> like he oh, that's why it. they laughed. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Armand's like, look, I don't really have a lot of answers. I've never seen anything that proves that heaven or hell exists. Uh, there's right. nothing that has our deeper meaning. Uh, we're all alone. And Louie's like, oh, fuck, that sucks. <laughs> um, he kind of I think he questions him about his mentor he's like uh, did your mentor not teach you any of this yeah. it's like no he sucked he's like tell me more about him I'm like nah yeah. nah but then the other vampire reads his mind yeah he does and he's like what did you do yeah he's like I never told him what I did to Lissad he's like what did you do he's like oh god yeah and he's like remember we only have one rule that's punishable by death and that's if you kill another vampire right which was on the last season of What We Do in the Shadows. Pretty funny. It's like, we only have one rule. But um, then they did that anyway, so. Yeah. What you call it? Uh, Claudia knows that Armand is bored with the theater and wants Louis. Yep. Yeah, she seems to have some kind of, or maybe it's just She her. says, she says like, yeah, Armand, like, like I, I she heard. She said his soul was speaking to her. Right? Yes. And again, uh, in the book. Armand kind of can do this. He can influence you. And then later in the book, he's like, by the way, I'm the one who influenced you to get rid of Claudia. I went into your mind to make you want me over her. Louis's not happy about that. Um, in this one, they kind of leave it more big. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but she's like, he wants to separate us. Like, nah, we're fine. We can learn from him. Mm. Uh, let me see here. Armand tells them, it's like, hey, Claudia should not have been made. They're investigating that shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, uh, I have more answers for you if you ask the right questions. Mm. Gaslighting. Uh, and, also, and then he goes like, so uh, what happened to Lestat? He's like, oh shit, you know Lestat. <laughs> Lestat must have wept when he made you. Lestat. Uh, but here's where we learn. He's like, if you wonder why there's not like many old vampires it's because they all have trouble adjusting to change mm -hmm. which is why Armand is like you excite me you're new you can help me with this new era yeah that's why they make yeah. new vampires like all the time then they have them to hang around with and be like oh it's like boomers just like, oh now I can boomers. understand yeah. your trends yeah honestly at this day and age just go on TikTok <laughs> yeah like you'll learn everything right then and there <laughs> if vampires had tiktok yeah. they'd be okay they would yeah. <laughs> but a lot of vampires apparently they just like hit an age where they just can't adapt and they just kill themselves they're like mm -mm. that's rough they're like fuck it i don't know what's a cell phone ah i'm gonna go outside <laughs> kill me I'm gonna just go take outside. me <laughs> hey lestat we're dabbing now like oh i don't know what that is <laughs> i'm going right to the sun <laughs> <laughs> um uh what you call it uh armand does not elaborate more on what he knows about lestat but in the right. novel like armand was super into lestat mm. also lestat owns this isn't revealed to the sequels lestat okay. owns that theater he <gasps> built that theater he owns that theater okay he kind of gave them the idea for the whole theater <laughs> the scene like with the whole beneath the theater like those catacombs that yeah that's amazing. cool that, monstrous <laughs> i don't remember that i don't remember that being in the book but yeah like the there's like nice. a the theater is built on top of catacombs mm -hmm. which is cool uh it's a really cool setting um yeah claudio brings a woman home right she's like turn her for me mm -hmm. and he's like what i want a mom and she's all like, my daughter died. I want a little girl who will never die. And she's like, I need someone to protect me. I'm tiny. Yeah. And yeah. I would like a mother yeah. again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, so Louis just like, God damn it. She's like, I know you're leaving for Armand. Give Wait, me this. She's like 60. <laughs> Why she want <laughs> She wants a companion. Okay. Someone who won't leave her. And also helps with her identity, like her secret identity. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's fair because it is more common for mother and children. Mm, yes. Mother and children yeah. to travel, yeah. Yes. The, the, the lady had a, like a locket too, right? Yeah, with her dead yeah. daughter. Uh, so Louis agrees, and this is the first person he killed. Yep. Oh my God. So Claudia had no problem finding this person and being like, hey, this is what it is. Do you want to do it? Yeah. So it's a man thing. I guess so. <laughs> and then she couldn't change her. She, she, was, said, she, she said I wasn't strong. She, you made sure of yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Brad Pitt's is like, by the way, that's the first person I killed. Oh, yeah, you, because I of how much lost. blood they got. Yeah. So like Louis got like a crap ton of Lestat's blood. She didn't get a lot. Yeah. So that's why he's stronger. Yeah. Ooh, she I tried. Just, I just connected Not that. for <laughs> lack of trying. But then she, I think she says like we're even now because she killed Lestat and then Louis, did, it's like a whole yeah. thing. And then she kisses him and it's uncomfortable. Uh... Then the vampires show up. Dude, this lady just changed. Too. Yeah, just why changed. is she like, In fun. the book, she get, I think she gets like a little bit, like a few days at least okay. uh, before this happens. But now the movie speeds it up. So the vampires show up and they're like, well, you're all getting punished. We know what you did. But when you think of it, she probably wouldn't have wanted just Claudia to go anyway after she'd already lost yeah. her kid. Yeah. It's weird that Lestat's not here because in the novel, he shows up and he's the one who rats them out. I thought that that was kind of implied I didn't realize the dude was like I kind of realized he was mind reading but like I mm. thought I was like somewhat something's going on did yeah. someone say something to them I think they like mind read and they maybe looked into it or something so why did Claudia still have to die if Lestat was there and obviously alive because she's still in because they at least they, they tried to murder him um. so so yeah, they get uh, punished. Uh, what you call it? Um, Wait, because they what? Because she tried to murder Lestat, she still gets punished. Yes, but they're going to murder Lestat because he broke a rule anyway, right? Yeah, he broke the rule by creating by her. creating her. So she's actually uh, doing correct. That is no, I don't. This think, is sexist. No, no, no. That's not a punishable rule. That's more like a like that shouldn't have done that. Well, um, they sh she shouldn't have tried to kill him. She didn't actually kill him. Yeah. But she, she. This is bullshit. She, it was there a was intent arrest. to murder. <laughs> fair. There was intent to murder, but it didn't happen. Is that mur like that's murder in the first degree, right? Or attempted murder? This um, is the vampire world. It's different. Yeah. Yeah, they're all kind of assholes. <laughs> um, yeah. So they uh, they put her and the the woman in the the hole. This seems fucked yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, and then they. Why did they even have that? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, they put Louis in an iron coffin locket so and then brick him up. Yeah, but the, he can hear them, right? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and they're all like laughing assholes about it. And the whole time yeah. Armand's just like, uh, yeah, lets it happen. And then he pretends he's like, oh, I could only save you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> fucking the sun comes up and they like burn. Yeah. And they looked at uh, it was kind of. Pressing. Uh, Stan Winston looked at images of like uh, Hiroshima and like the bodies that got like charred oh, into ash. How they, which I think he had already looked into for Terminator 2 because there's that whole scene where like the kids are like nuked and stuff. And so like Pompeii too because that's kind of like a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ugh, poor Pompeii. My poor people. Yeah, this scene was fucked up. Yeah. It's I thought you were so, black. Like, acting girl. Yeah. Like, whew. Huh? I thought you were black. Well, you ask, you tell me. <laughs> so I talked about this on a bonus video, but I was there with another Italian, so we couldn't figure it out. Uh, someone on Reddit said, uh, it's confusing mm. that I say I'm Italian because my dad looks too dark skinned to be Italian. So am I, am I white or black? What, what am I? Um, what do you identify as? Because your dad is black. <laughs> <laughs> But it's up to you. So you're mixed. As a mixed child. You know what old Italian guys love being told? That they're black. They love it. It's their favorite <laughs> thing. Um, <laughs> oh my fucking God. Uh, I don't know. I don't I know. I, I'm i afraid to answer it. <laughs> Am I a person of color? Am I a white devil? I don't know. I don't know. Well, a Am I like Blade? Am I a day walker? Far walk in between yeah. the world? <laughs> You're very against slavery, so I know that. Mm, mm, <laughs> <laughs> He's, he gets 
Um, he gets Lewis out of the pocket. <laughs> Well, there we go. I was finally going to get an answer. And much like Louie, I'm not getting answers. Nice. I'm basic. I'm, you know what? I identify as Brad Pitt. I'm basically <laughs> Brad Pitt. Oh, Please. my God. I, I see. I see Kira. And I'm like, she'll finally answer this question that I have. And you're like, nah. I'm your Armand. <laughs> it's not happening this yeah. today. <laughs> So yes. Um, oh my god! What you call it? Uh, Armand saves him. Louis mm. is very, very upset about uh, the kids. The, of the course, kid dying. they were even laughing as he was like going to find the dead body. Yeah, the one lady's like down on the ground, like snickering. I'm like, Ew, I'm so glad you died. Yeah. Oh, that like, scene like, wait, wait, was so sad. Wait till he leaves. Wait till he leaves. Because yeah, it's weird. Because like Armand is the leader, but even he says like, if there was a leader, I guess it'd be me. Yeah. It's kind of like it's just he's the oldest, so. But again, uh, vampires are bad parents because yeah. he just lets them get murdered. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Louis, he goes out during the day. Somehow yeah. he's able to like stay awake long enough. And he just pours like kerosene everywhere. Yeah. And he lights them all on and fire. And just waits with a sickle. Yeah. Or, or the scythe. Or right? scythe, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait. It was in the play. It was in the play. <laughs> but it does look, it's pretty dramatic. But it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it was in the play. Yeah. But I, and also, I didn't realize it was a real fucking sigh. Like, I yeah. thought there was just a problem. But yeah, he's slicing them up. And like, the slicing effect is awesome. It was beautiful. I love yeah. that last kill, by the way. Oh, oh yeah. That with that with asshole. The, yeah. He yeah. was doing the funny and He's like, ha ha, again. I'm going to move really fast. And he's yeah. like, ha ha, bitch, I knew you were going behind me. Yeah. <laughs> and he just slices <laughs> it and like in drops half. it off him. Yeah. But yeah, here is a, we have a CGI vampire on fire that's like, and it falls, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think we needed that scene. Yeah. I, I get it. CGI was new. They were excited, but I'm like, I'm like, everything else in the scene was fucking awesome until that. Yeah. Um, so you know, I can't. So with uh, Lestat, he got, you know, I'm pregnant, don't leave. Yes. And with Armand, he got, I will abandon my children for this <laughs> new dick. Yeah, so yeah, uh, Louis about to die in the sunlight. And Armand comes with his little slave boy. By the way, in the book, he just kills that slave boy randomly oh, no. at some point. After he's like, all oh, he did, he's like, yeah, I killed that guy. Something you, I did. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, so yeah, he rescues him. Um, so yeah, speaking of um, speeding things up. Mm. Of oh, also, this is not the first time Armand has killed a coven. Uh, Armand it, has killed COVID. Uh, killed a co uh, coven. Oh. Coven, not COVID. <laughs> it sounded like, yeah, <laughs> I heard it too. I'm like, can we go to Disney World? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so in the novel, pass. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> yeah. So in the novel, like Armand and Louis, they like live together for years. Do they? And travel and whatnot. But yeah. like the thing is, Louis eventually is like, hey, I know. What happens in this scene where he's like, I know you're responsible for Claudia's death and you yeah. wanted it to happen. And Armand's like, what? <laughs> Me? No. <laughs> That's the equivalent of like. Uh, I mean, he says it, though, in the movie where he's like the way he when he takes him out of the coffin, he's like, mm -hmm. oh, I couldn't. I could only help you. Yeah, only you. <laughs> I mean, they're in the other room. I probably could have grabbed them. I only help you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, he leaves them. So they never go on their little adventures together. He just leaves them right then and there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but in the book, they're like hanging out for a while. Yeah. Um, also, uh, in the book, Lestat was just conveniently not there for that whole burning of the theater. And Armand's like pissed. He's like, man, I was excited to hang out with Brad Pitt for years. Well, he got some time out of him. Should have started Brad looking. Brad Pitt and Antonio Banderas? That's a, that's a hot 90s couple right there. That is... That's yeah, it's hotter Not than for Tom Cruise. Apparently, Brad oh, Antonio's great. Yeah, he's Brad Pitt in there. He's pretty good. He's gonna be in that terrible Uncharted movie mm -hmm. that looks really bad. Oh. So is that other uh, the really hot girl um, who plays Prudence in uh, the in Charmed? Uh, no, uh, Sabrina, the Netflix Sabrina. Oh, um, oh. Tati Gabrielle or whatever. I like her. Oh. Have you ever heard her real she's voice? She's beautiful. No. It's like super like squeaky and adorable. Yeah. Like, yeah, but when she actually like talks, she's all talking like, you know, like normal and like this and everything. Yeah. I'm just like, girl, like you can get it anyway. Yeah, she's Whew. hot. Are you done? No. Okay, so the <laughs> this is where like a lot of the big changes from the book happen. Okay. He goes back to America. Right. 
He gets to see Superman. Yeah, I was going to say, you can tell this is a war. I criticize Warner Brothers for this, but they've been doing it for a while. They show their own movies in their movie. <laughs> the new Matrix does it. Well, Space Jam 2 is the ultimate offender. Oh. I don't even. Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't want to. I mean, the Lego movies kind of did it too. How come all Space property. Jam took out Sexy Lola, but they left in, uh, they put those guys from Clockwork Orange? Clockwork Orange. They cut out Pepe Le Pew, but they left the Danny DeVito penguin who literally goes up to Catwoman and says, just the pussy I've been looking for. And the Game sexual, of Thrones. The Game of Thrones. Yeah, the rape show Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, Some things deserve to be updated, but that is what we call faux outrage. Because like, why? Why? Well, you know, while they why they were all in the, the background. Why? So when you buy HBO Max, you could be like, oh, yeah, that's right. The Batman movies are on this app. Oh, oh Clockwork Orange is on this app. Oh. oh, who's that? Is that the Iron Giant? Oh, I can watch the Iron Giant on this app. King that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only reason that movie exists. It was to promote the app. But then yeah. COVID didn't have it come out in theaters in time. So you could only watch it on the app. Okay. And it's like, well, so the movie that the movie saying buy HBO Max, but I have to buy HBO Max to watch the movie that tells me to buy HBO Max. Oh now God. I see it as, okay, you're sitting there, you're watching it for some reason, and you're like, oh, yeah, after this, I'm going to watch that movie. Or after yeah. this, I'm going to watch that show. Well, Harry Potter. I've never on. had, I it definitely would never watch Space Jam with my child and then be like, oh, yeah, I should watch Clockwork Orange. <laughs> My family probably would. I remember me and my mom watching Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> because my mom showed me Stanley Kubrick's other movies: The Shining, Full Metal Jacket, uh, Eyes Wide. I remember being young watching my Eyes mom Wide. Did show me the Shining. <laughs> Is that oh why you like Tom Cruise? Huh? Is that why you like Tom Cruise? No, I like him because of Mission Impossible. Mm, always mm. running. Ethan. <laughs> That's his run. Um, so yeah, he goes back to America. He learns about film. And uh, again, it Gone with the Wind is playing. Yeah. And Superman yeah. the movie, Warner Brothers. Um, I mean, it's cute, though, because like as a vampire, he doesn't get to see those things. So yeah. And he's like, this is crazy. Pictures. I could see it in color. This is amazing. Yeah. Uh, they changed the timeline a lot. So the book, when he meets Lestat, is in the 20s. OK. Uh, this, they changed it to the 80s. Oh, OK. Uh, so he comes out of a theater and he's like, I, I felt something. I went to Louisiana and I didn't know why. In the book, he actually is looking for Was it weird for him seeing black people? He's like, oh, I used to own this. I'm sorry. I, know, I, I think he's been around seeing a lot of black people for 200 years. I don't, black people didn't go away. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> yeah, but they weren't. Well, oh, you know what? But like, what time was it? Were they allowed in the theater that he was in? Oh, the 80s? So in yeah. the, oh, 80s, the 80s, yes. Oh, the 80s. Okay, sorry, sorry. I forgot. If they kept it to the 20s, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the 80s, no. I, I would be shocked if Louie was like, ah, black people. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yes, black people. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and remember, the vampires, they don't care about race or anything because they're just like, we're not even human. I don't even care about any of that human shit. No, I get that. But like his whole, like, I mean, that's got to be a core memory being a plantation owner, right? No, it wouldn't be for me. <laughs> it, you know what it is? You know what it is? It is a core regret because slavery is wrong. And you can quote me on that. I don't mind. I don't mind having that hot take. Slavery is wrong. Right? So he <laughs> sees a bunch of rats. <laughs> it's weird that you're not agreeing with me. I'm going to point that out. <laughs> so he sees a bunch of rats. <laughs> and he finds Lestat, who's not doing well. He's one of the vampires that has not aged well. In the book, I think he still has like a friend. We right. find out in the sequel, one of the reasons he's not aging well is because fucking Armand threw him out a goddamn window. That's oh. why he's like really fucked up. Okay. Because he went back to Armand. Armand's like, will you be my boyfriend now? And the stats like, nah. So Armand threw him out a window. That's why he's, but he's not like I able. I love that for him though. Right? Yeah. Like, good for him. But like, he's not able to like feed on people anymore because he's, oh. he's so out of touch. So he's not able to. I mean, he was such a wounds. leech before. Why yeah. not just stick with Armand until you're, you know? Yeah. That's the thing. So he's just living in a building, like sad, just still yeah. dressed the same, eating rats. What was I thought? I've seen this film before, mm. but seeing it as an adult and like the whole like helicopter with the floodlights in the window, I'm like, is is Louis like 
is he in the army now? Did he set him up? Oh no, I that was just What's like a helicopter happening? looking but for why? someone because we heard police oh. sirens earlier. Okay, but well, who are the people in the helicopter? They're just like it was like directly. Like, is that the, the guy window. we're looking for? It's like nah, it's just two vampires. Let's go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Vampires, yeah, it's just two gay guys. Oh, no, realistically, like, yeah, just two gay guys. Yeah. Like, oh, like, Marines were going to start busting <laughs> through the window. I'm like, what's happening? But it's a show, like, so Lestat doesn't like, like, all the constant noise, which is... All the new things. The, the noise kind of conflicts with the next movie. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he's afraid of the light on the helicopter because he thinks it's the sun, but it's You not... think that, like, people's death rattles and screams would be noise? Yeah, but that's can't mind it that likes. much. He oh, likes okay. noise. That that's cool. But he basically is like, "Hey, if you like be my boyfriend again, like <laughs> yeah. hang out, and I can be cool again." And Louis's like, "I'm no. out." No, yeah, like, oh, shit. He's like, "Remember how much I chased you?" <laughs> <laughs> so he leaves him there to live out his days. He's gone insane. Right. Uh, then it cuts back, and the what should we call it? The the story is done. Mm. But fucking uh, the boy, the interviewer, he's like, what? You guys can live forever. That's awesome. And Louis's like, have you not been paying? Like, Listening this to sucks. any of this. Yeah. This like sucks. Yeah. Uh, you're miserable all the time. You're always hungry. Like, stop it. Yeah. He's like, make me a vampire. I'll be your guide to the new world. And he just kind of leaves him. Mm. In the book, he actually like bites him. He's like, maybe you'll die. I don't know. And he comes through the In next the movie. Day. He's like, ah, you're too desperate. Yeah, and the book does end on the cliffhanger of him being like, where did he say Lestat lived? I'm going to go there. Well, Lestat, uh, that's why if the, when you made that joke, I was confused because I'm like, well, Lest I thought that there would be something else with him because Lestat, it kind of is implied that he's going to change him. He's going to be his young vampire. Yes, that's not what happened. But th this is what they added for the movie is Lestat's so there in the, the car. Book? Okay, yeah. And I like he puts the tape on. He's like, oh, I heard enough of this whining. And he's like, ah, oh, two like, Take this out. with this guy. <laughs> Still whining, Louis. Oh, uh, but also, yeah, he looks it, a lot better. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, as soon as he drinks the blood, he starts to feel better. But even he's just like, he ends with the, like, I'll give you a choice I didn't have, and it ends on that cliffhanger. In the book, it just ends with the uh, the interviewer being like, oh, I think this is the address, and it just ends there. Yeah. Uh. Turns out he never finds Lestat. Okay. Armand ends up changing him. Mm. But Armand makes him hang out with him for like 20 years. It's yeah, that like, would be the downside. Armand seems to be like heavily, like he has like attachment issues. Yeah, yeah. Just like, I, that's not what I came here for. Just <laughs> They all have attachment issues. Yeah. So that was Interview with the Vampire, the Vampire Chronicles. They were right. getting ready to franchise this and it didn't really work out that well. Yeah. Uh, what did you guys think of this movie? I think that I can now uh, understand fully that slavery is bad. That's the main takeaway from this movie. Yeah. And if you were on the fence before clicking this video, I hope we change things around for you. Yeah. And if you know someone who's on the fence, send them this review. We're going to make some yeah. changes here. Yes. Yeah. It's a very political, ch politically charged <laughs> show. We care about the social justice. If anything, mm. I feel like I'm a warrior for social justice. <laughs> Joanna, what did we you think of the interview with We just ended the racial the divide with this video. Yes, we did. We you did. Know. Tony's mixed. <laughs> Thank you for finally confirming it. <laughs> Joanna, did you like interview with the vampire? Yeah, it was good. Vampires are very fucking dramatic for like no reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're real drama queens if yeah. you ask me. Um, and Reminds you agree, you. you, you agree slavery is bad? Yes, Tony. <laughs> I have to, I'm, I'm not, jury's still out on her. I have to keep making sure she doesn't change her answer. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that is it from us. This is the, the, the good one, the good Anne Rice movie. And this is being remade as a series, which I think is a good idea. Uh, when? Soon. Like oh. it's in development. It's been in development for a while. Do and we then have I think, a lineup? No, okay. uh, maybe I haven't followed it too closely. I know it's happening. Okay. Um. Uh. And again, Anne Rice has died recently. Rest in peace. Sad about yeah. That. Felt bad about. It. I was like literally listening to her audiobook, and then I like turned on the computer. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> when it happened, you texted me. Yeah. And you were like, "This is gonna be awkward." <laughs> <laughs> it really is, because like. Now, now I'm afraid to like plan more stuff. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. This is like a cool thing we're planning. And it's like, oh, the person died. 
And it's like, don't shit on Remember it. Remember we made fun of Alec Baldwin a week before he shot that girl? Oh. We had a whole skit where Alec Baldwin called us and he's angry and we we're talking about you don't want to piss off Alec Baldwin and then literally like a week later he shot that girl. Oh my God. Allegedly. So the show was allegedly, a curse. allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's what's funny about that. There was a gun prop sitting here and I yeah. was going to like, ah ha ha. And then I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. I mean, that gun's, yeah, all our guns that were formerly real guns, I've all been deactivated, so. That's what he thought. You should still treat it as a real gun, but, like, they couldn't even, all our guns, they wouldn't even be able to fire. Okay. Like, they are welded shut, so. Oh, okay. And also, there's no firing pin, so if you pull the trigger, nothing would happen, and just say something did happen, it would just explode I just thought it gun. wouldn't be the proper climate. I was like, it's, it's not a funny joke. Not, I shouldn't do it. <laughs> anyway, Kira, thank you for awakening from your slumber. You're welcome. Uh, where can we find you? Uh, on Instagram at Kira.Mortis. Ah. Anywhere else that's all you're at? That's all. Okay. okay. Or in my, you know, closet. That you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not in the closet. That's where Jessica edits. I have you in the the, the basement, I guess. <laughs> uh, yes, and you can like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us out. Join on Patreon. Our Patreon's really popping off. Uh, what else do we have? Not on Teespring. <laughs> the podcast feed join the podcast uh, if you if you can't watch us maybe you know y you like the show but there's some people you don't find particularly pleasing to look at like you uh you can just listen to us so you're not distracted uh which is really nice and uh yeah just uh but i think at this point all the 2020 commentary tracks should be on Bandcamp. So if you're not a patron. And that was being worked on. Yes. If you're not a patron and you want to listen to some commentary tracks, all the ones I did in 2020 are now up there. Mm. Uh, and at some point in the future, I'll put the 2021s up there. But for now, got to be a patron to check out that shit. Yeah. You don't want to be the loser like a year or two from now. Like, oh, I just finally listened to uh, Johanna and Tony's Godzilla commentary track. And then the cool people will be like, yeah, I listened to it the week it came out. I'm a patron. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to be that person. So do that and goodbye. I have so many things I want to talk about. I'm like going to get off track here. This is the case of a game that was far more popular in Japan than it was in the United States. They never <laughs> went to Mordor. What are you talking about? It's <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> But there's real detail. There's like wiring underneath. You know, they're, they're one out. and done. That's yeah. it. Sold yeah. out. So they're super hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him, guys. Bring it back. Here oh, we go no, again. No, Round no, two. No. <laughs> <laughs>